Revelations 13, 1 through 3. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast arise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like upon a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of the heads, as it were, wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wandered after the beast. Sabbath and welcome to another session of the Truth Enlighten. Um, <clears throat> today I have an uh, interesting uh, health tip and that's based on uh, inflammation, inflammation, nine healthy eating tips that can help reduce inflammation in the body. And uh, for the inspirational uh, talk would be, what is the baptism of the Holy Spirit? All right. Uh, today I'm coming on later because I, today I went to the prison. So every, you know, every fourth and third Sabbath I go there. So every third and Fourth and third, you would uh, notice me coming in later. Um, nonetheless, the video would be there for you to see. And uh, for those of you who would be joining the live, I trust that you um, in good health and strength. And for those of you who have subscribed to our YouTube channel, I thank you. And uh, that you know I appreciate it. And for those of you who have not yet subscribed, I ask um, that you go over to YouTube and uh, like and subscribe. Check out our Facebook, our Facebook page, The Truth Enlighten, and we are also on Instagram. All right. So, without any further ado, let's get into. Uh, the topic of healthy, nine healthy eating tips that can help reduce inflammation. This information has been taken from uh, the health um, UC Davis website, health.ucdavis.edu. All right, so you can go there um, and view the information. What is inflammation? Acute inflammation is one body, is our body's rapid response to an injury or infection, such as cut to your finger, redness, swelling, and pain are outward signs of acute inflammation. These are signs that the body is beginning. Uh, the healing process. Chronic inflammation is typically low grade but is persistent and can last for months or years. Chronic inflammation has been linked to a variety of different health conditions like heart disease, high blood pressure, certain cancers, chronic pain, type 2 diabetes, anxiety, depression, certain autoimmune condition, and dementia. What causes inflammation? 
there are many factors that can contribute to chronic inflammation. Some factors we have <clears throat> factors we have control over and others we do not. These include dietary choice, smoking and tobacco use, exercise habits, sleep quantity and quality, alcohol use, persistence, viral or bacterial infection, allergens and environmental pollution in our hair, water and foods. Stress also. As you can see, you can make lifestyle choices that lower chronic inflammation rather than fueling it. In particular, our food, chron our food choices have a significant impact on our health. Your diet as a whole has a large effect on the level of chronic inflammation in the body. Healthy eating tips to help reduce inflammation. One, eat plenty of fruits and vegetables. Try for at least six, or six, half, half cup serving each day. Include as much vibrantly colored produce as you can. Different colors have different benefits. Two, choose high fiber carbohydrates. Limit high proce processed low fiber carbohydrates like many white flour products, pasta, white breads, English muffin, bagel, crackers, and muffin, instant, instant rice, instant potatoes, and most cold cereal. Choose more high fiber carbohydrates. This includes whole grain like brown rice, whole wheat products like bread and pasta, barley, oats, quinoa, buckwheat, and farro. You can also look for starchy vegetables such as sweet potato, potatoes, winter squashes, beets, corn, beans, and peas. Three, eat more fiber. Fiber is essential for our gut health and therefore our overall health. Most Americans only get about 50% of the recommended daily amount of fiber. Try for 25, 25 grams per day for women and 38 grams per day for men. Fiber comes from plant foods. There are two types of fiber and most fiber containing foods are a combination of both types. Insoluble fiber does not absorb any water and provide bulk to the, to the stool. This helps your digestion by keeping things moving and making your bowel movement soft and easy to pass. Examples of insoluble fibers are the skin, seeds, and strange G parts of fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds, and the bran of whole grain. Soluble fiber absorbs water and forms a gel. This helps keep your blood sugar stable after a meal and keeps you fuller for longer, making meals more satisfying. It also helps lower cholesterol, promotes hormonal balance, and supports healthy bowel movements. Examples include beans and other legume, legumes, 
flax or shea seeds and old grain old grains like oats both types of fibers are important so include a variety of of all plant foods to help you get the recommended amount each day four choose plant based and uh, leaner animal protein sources plan to eat more plant based sources for of protein this can include soy products tofu tempa tempa uh adamine soy milk beans lentils nuts and seeds choose lean animal protein like fish chicken and turkey try to limit red meat and avoid processed meats and choose low fat dairy products when when barbecuing or cooking meat avoid charring as this creates a compound that can trigger inflammation in other words don't let it burn you know your barbecue burn five be conscious of your fat your fat sources cook with unsaturated fats like extra virgin olive oil most often use nutrition neutral tasting oils for higher heat cooking like avocado oil expeller pressed canola or sunflower oil stay away from from trans fat these are present in deep fried foods and anything with partially hydrated oil also try to limit also try to limit your intake of saturated fats these include butter fatty meats poultry skin uh, processed meats cheeses and other high fat dairy products coconut oil palm oil and coconut butter six reduce omega-6 to omega-3 ratio in the diet work in more work in more omega-3 rich foods into your diet these include omega-3 enriched eggs and wild caught fatty fish like salmon mackerel sardines and herrings plant-based sources include flaxseed chia seed hemp seed and walnut limit your intake of omega-6 rich oils typically these oils are mainly present in ultra processed foods including soybean safflower corn grape seed and cottonseed oils seven reduce your sugar intake the average american con consumes 17 teaspoons which is 68 grams of added sugar daily which is two to three times greater than the recommended limit keep your added sugar intake to less than six percent of your total calories for men that means no more than nine teaspoons or 36 grams per day for women limit added sugar to less than six teaspoons which is 24 grams per day check labels <clears throat> check labels the labels of the food you're buying for sugar amount keep in mind one teaspoon sugar equals about four grams of sugar avoid sugary drinks like soda lemonade sweetened teas juices and sweetened coffees limit eating desserts past uh, pastries candies and other sweets other foods which often contain added sugars that you may not expect includes bread salad dressings 
condiments, cereals, yogurts, pasta, sauces, crackers, and chips. Honey and, nap and maple syrup are less refined forms of sugar, but they still count as added sugar. 8. Limit or avoid alcohol disrupt <clears throat> Alcohol disrupts the gut micro, microbiome and can contribute to chronic inflammation. If you want an alcoholic drink, keep your average to one drink or less per day. Finally, nine, add, add tea, spices, and anti-inflammatory benefits into your diet. Black, white, and green tea are rich in antioxidants and polyphenols, which can help combat inflammation. Some herbal teas also have anti-inflammatory benefits. Many herbs and spices also contain compounds that can help combat inflammation. Examples include rosemary, garlic, Organo, ginger, turmeric, cloves, nutmeg, cinnamon, and cayenne. Keep in mind that the whole of your diet is greater than the sum of its parts. One meal will not make or break a healthy diet. It is consistency over time that matters. By keeping these tips in mind, you'll be adopting a healthy eating pattern that can help manage chronic inflammation and some of its associated health problems. All right? So that brings us to the end of the health topic, which is the nine tips for um, the nine healthy eating tips that can help reduce inflammation. Many people suffer with inflammation in the body. And um, because of that, sometimes we are in pain, you know. And um, a matter of fact, I can attest to that, you know, that... Um, when you cut down the, uh, the inf inflammation foods, it helps um, with those things. Like taking, for instance, I suffer from sciatica. The way that I was able to control the sciatic um, pain, I didn't know all of this until I, I, went, I was lying on my bed and couldn't, you know, could hardly move. I started looking up you know, what I can do because the doctor said there's nothing you can do except for surgery. So that was out. Surgery was out. So what else I can do? They say you have to manage it. So I real I learned that inflammation in the body triggers that pain. When the when the area become inflamed, that is where you feel the pain, right? Because of the degeneration of that um, that disc, so it's bulging, right? It's beginning to bulge, and it's touching the sciatic nerve, and that causes the pain. The pain, but when you eat less inflammation food, it helps. And I started incorporating more ginger, you know, turmeric in 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 my food, you know, and so on. And then later on. I came off of the meat for the most part. I still eat meat, but, you know, it's not like I have to have it. And it's not constant, not every day. So I went for a long time on vegetables, nuts, fruits, and so on. So I can tell you from the time that happened, and I came off of that, to God be the glory, I haven't experienced sciatic pain like that. You know, every now and then, you know, I can feel it down my 
my leg, my legs. So, you know, but that's nothing compared to what I went through in 2013 and 2014. So from that time. And then the thing is, when you tell people who are not accustomed to, you know, a healthier eating, healthy eating habit, you know, you know, that goes through one ear. I met a lot of people who were suffering from sciatic pain and other pains that involve inflammation, like knee pain, you know. Um, you know, you tell them what to do, but, you know, people want their meat. You know, it's all about the, it's all about the taste, you know, and um, the choice is yours. Choose to please your palate. You know, and live in pain, or choose to um, please your, you know, eat good and you know feed your body healthy food and reduce the pain. Right? I choose, I choose the latter because I don't like pain. Simple. Um, at one time, I was feeling something in my knees, and then I learned that tomatoes. The skin and the seed as that um, I think um, enzyme the enzymes in that causes you know you, you know invoke pain and um, I dropped tomatoes during that time um, I dropped cut out cow's milk and all of that and then that went away you know, because more of these milks and cheese and so on, they cause inflammation in the body. They, in, you know, build up inflammation. So um, I'm not giving you anything that I'm not willing to try. I'm not telling you about anything that I have not done or wouldn't do. You know, so this is just my way of helping you, somebody out there who might, you know, need some help in terms of you know what they're going through physically so these are the diets all right um now for inspirational um topic that is what is the baptism of the holy spirit you know what is the baptism of the holy spirit some people a lot of people believe that when you for you to have a baptism of the holy spirit you have to begin to speak in tongues and dance, dance on your head and do all manner of things to have the baptism. You know, you're baptizing the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Like we discussed last week and the week before, that that's not necessarily so. You know, you don't have to feel anything. You don't have to do anything different to um, have the Holy Spirit in you. Right? So let's see what the Bible has to say about having the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, the baptism of the Holy Spirit may be defined as that work whereby the Spirit of God places the believer into union with Christ and into union with other believers in the body of Christ and the, mo and the moment of of salvation at the moment of salvation the baptism of the holy spirit was predicted by john the baptist in mark chapter 1 verses 8 and by jesus before they ascending before he ascended into heaven for john baptized with water but in a few days you will be baptized with the holy spirit in acts chapter 1 verses 5 this promise was fulfilled on the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. For the first time, the people were permanently indwelled by the Holy Spirit, and the church had begun. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 through 13 says, <clears throat> is, the central, is the central passage in the Bible regarding the baptism of the Holy Spirit. For we were all baptized by one spirit into one body, whether Jews or Greeks or slave or free, and we were all given 
the one spirit to drink. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 13. Notice that we all have been baptized by the spirit. All believers have received the baptism. Right? Synonymous with salvation. And it is not a spirit, not a special experience for only a few. While Romans chapter 6 verses 1 through 4 does not mention specifically the Spirit of God, it does not describe, it does describe the believer's position before God in language similar to the 1 Corinthians passage. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We die to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live as uh, live a new life. All right. The <clears throat> the follow <clears throat> the following facts are necessary to help solidify our understanding of the Spirit baptism. First. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 13 clearly states that all have been baptized, just as all been given the Spirit to drink. The indwelling of the Spirit. Second, nowhere in Scripture are believers told to be baptized with, in or by the Spirit, or in any sense to seek the baptism of the Holy Spirit. This indicates that all believers have had the experience, this experience. Third, Ephesians chapter 4 verses 5 seems to refer to spirit baptism. If this is the case, spirit baptism is the, is the reality for every believer, just as one faith and one father are. In my conclusion, the baptism of the Holy Spirit does two things. One, it joins us to the body of Christ. Two, it actualizes our, our co-crucifixion with Christ. Being in His body means we are risen with Him to newness of life, Romans chapter 6, verses 4. We should then exercise our spiritual gift to keep that body functioning properly as stated in the context of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 13. Experiencing the one spirit baptism serves as the basis for keeping the unity of the church, as in the context of Ephesians chapter 4, verses 5. Being associated with Christ in his death, burial, and resurrection through spirit baptism establishes the basis for our separation from the power of, of indwelling sin and our walk in newness of life. Romans 6, 1, 10 and Colossians chapter 2 verses 12. Right? Here ends the topic on baptism by the Holy Spirit. Now, I hope you understand that when you baptize, when every person who accept Christ and went down into the watery, watery grave of baptism, Receive the Holy Spirit. Right? So, that signifies your burial with Christ. And your raising up signifies 
the raising in newness of life. For the old man has been put to death. And the new man, you're saying in demonstration that the new man is raised in Christ. Continue to live in that, um, in the way that God wants you to live. When Jesus comes, you come in Christ. And when he goes, you go with him. It's about having the relationship with Christ. You may not experience speaking in tongues. You may not experience miracles and all these kinds of things. It doesn't mean that the believer doesn't have the Holy Spirit. Like I was telling the guys today, that this old thing, right, from Genesis to Revelation, like some people would call it, God's love letter to mankind, the Bible, that is, the entire 66 book. What we need to do, be doing is living in love. Love in God first and loving our neighbors as we love ourselves, right? And this is found in Mark chapter 12, verses 30 to 31, right? If you're loving the Lord, the Lord, with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and the, the, uh, the next one is, is as the, the same, loving your neighbor as yourself. And then, if you want to know if you really have the Holy Spirit, and this is what I challenge anybody with, talking about having the Holy Spirit, if you have the Holy Spirit, then the next stage to that is, it's supposed to be one, but then, Sometimes you have to be broken down so that people could understand. Is loving your enemies. It's easy for us to love people who love us. But it's hard for us to love those who don't love us. And so he said, love your enemies. Do good to those that willfully use and despise you. Right? So not only use but they spies, right? And if they come to you and they're hungry, you need to feed them, right? If they ask you for direction, you need to give it to them. That's it. When we reach there, when we have reached that point, we have arrived. If there is such thing as arriving, you know, in the spiritual realm, you have arrived. There is nothing else that we do, right, that can say that, you know, oh, this person is... um. This is a truly a Christian, right? Because 1 Corinthians chapter 13 says, you can give your body to be burned and you can give to the poor and you can do all of this, you know? You can, you know, call his name from here to yonder. But if you have not charity, then you're just a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. It's not how much we can preach, not how much we can teach, not how much we know the Bible. Is how much love we have for God and our fellow man. So if you want to know if you have the Holy Spirit and you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, you know, I mean, that's going to be a struggle. But if you, if you want to know that, you, you of yourself have to know that you're sincerely, you're sincerely seeking Christ. And you have come to know Him as your Lord, Lord and, and personal friend and indwelling Savior. And you have chosen to demonstrate that to the world by going down into the watery grave of baptism, rising up, knowing that you're a new creature in Christ Jesus, and now you're walking the walk and talking the talk, and as you go along, right, you grow. You're now no more the person you used to be, but you're a different person, right? You, 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 you grow in gradually, right? Until Jesus comes, we may not fully well attain to that level, but at least we are moving in the right direction, right? You're growing. But um, if you find that you're the same person before you accept Jesus, and, well, I'm, and I'm very, you know, I'm, I'm stressing on this because we as human beings have a way of judging people um, by the way they act, by the things they do. You know, like I said last week, um, in our and the class they have 
a guy who is homosexual and um, he said he doesn't like going to other churches because the first thing they start to preach on is homosexuality, right? As if nobody else here has done anything. Well, you have murderers and you have thieves and you have rapists and all of that. Now, I'm saying that to say that that's how we judge people. We grade sin. We say, well, this sin is bigger than that sin. And, um, oh, you done something terrible. So um, there is no room in my book for you. And God, you know, you know, he, he, he doesn't care for what the thing. How I know, like I was telling um, the guys today, how I know whether a person have that or not is by their love. And love is not, we had this topic way back when on love. And love is not like, love is a set of things together. Love, because it said, like, love does not puff up itself. Love does not boast. Love does. So, um, love does not vaunt itself and so on. The thing is, when we, if a person, now you know that a person is truly walking in newness of life, they might made a make, might have made a, made a mistake, and then um, once it was brought to their attention, they're willing and ready to see to to seek forgiveness or say they're sorry, right? I'm sorry, and you know, and try their best to move on, and you know, it's not. The amount of time that the person for is to get enough if they're willing to get up, you know. So that's how we know if a person has, um, because the devil is not going to tell you to tell anybody. So, first of all, we believe that when we apologize, most people that's why I don't find a lot of people apologizing because when they apologize, they feel like they're less than a man or less than a woman, you know, because they have to apologize to that person. But when you feel like that, you know it's not God, not God in you. It's, it's not your Father God in you, it's the devil, right? Simple as that, right? So, um, on the subtopic of, uh, you know, it might look as if I'm drifting, but no way. Because when you receive the, the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, like I said, many people believe you got to see old fire got to come down from heaven and all that. No. Baptized, you receive the Holy Spirit. Your Holy Spirit now in you is giving you that unction to function, to walk in the ways of the Lord. Without Him, you would have not. You would not have. Before you come to Him, you are walking in your own way, going down the, the path of the God of this world. But now that you have come to Him, given your life to Him, and you know Him, and you, are, you allow Him into your life, he gives you the power to overcome. Do a lot of things that you might have done, you don't do. I can look back at a lot of things that I used to do. I don't do anymore. I'm not yet there. I'm not perfect. I'm still moving forward. You know, but like I said, you know, it's a gradual step forward. All right. So I trust that um, I've been some help to you, helping you to understand the Word of God and you know, um, helping, you know, with these health, health tips. I trust that um, if you have not shared the live, that you share the video and uh, so that somebody else may be blessed. Uh, go to the YouTube channel if you have not been here and yet and subscribe. If there is any questions, any, uh, you know, comments, or you think I'm talking wrong, then... You know, feel free to, you know, put in the comments what you think and how you think it should be, right? Let's have a discussion, you know, and um, that's how we grow. That's what it's all about. All right? So I want to thank you guys for tuning in. May God bless you and may he keep you and may he cause his faith to shine upon you. You know, and may he see you through this week, the coming week, and give you grace to carry on, you know. And uh, until next, next, next week, pray for me. I pray for you. And I pray that God keep you and give you sound mind 
and give you peace in your heart and um, wheresoever you go, you know, and that he will give you the a special, the special overcoming power to overcome sin and choose him, right, above everything else, right? And nothing else matters. Jesus is what matters, right? And life teaches that. In those hurricanes and all these natural disasters, all the houses and the material things knock down, right? Even some dead. But what stands is Jesus. So you stand for him. He stands for you. His, his um, word never returned to him void, you know? So may God continue to bless you and keep you until next time. Right? I love you and God love you more.